I want to continue my discussion of duration by showing you how to do the computations in Excel. Now, from the previous tutorial, we we did one by hand, and but it was only a three-year bond, so it wasn't too big a deal to calculate the present value of each of the three cash flows. But if you have a longer-term bond, if you have a bond that matures in 10 years or 20 years, it's a lot more tedious. Okay, it's not difficult, but it's a lot of different present value calculations. You can't actually use the function that just calculates the price of the bond, although there are um, programs in your calculator and on the spreadsheet that calculate duration. But if you wanted to calculate it by hand to sort of understand what was going on, it's very tedious. So what I've done is I've set up a spreadsheet here and I have a 10-year bond. And I have 10 here twice because one's going to be for the coupon payment, the interest rate, the interest payment, and one's going to be for the maturity value. And I put some numbers up here. I put a maturity value of 1,000, I put a yield of 10% of and a coupon of 10%. And part of the reason I picked these two to be the same is that when the yield and the coupon are the same, the price of the bond should equal the maturity value. So I've given myself something to kind of double check to make sure my, my answers are correct. So right here, I need to know what the cash flows are. And what are the cash flows? Well, we know that you're going to get a coupon, an interest payment, and the coupon is going to be the coupon rate of 10% times the maturity value. So I could just type in 100, but then if I wanted to change the coupon rate, I'd have to redo the whole calculation. By using a formula, it's much more effective. So I'm going to put in an equal sign. If you haven't used Excel in a while, when you put in some cell number, when you start with a letter, okay, this is cell B1, this is cell C2 right here. So when you're doing something like that, you need to start with an equal sign to tell Excel, I'm doing a formula, I'm not doing, um, I'm not doing a title or a label. So I want to say equals what's in cell B3, and I'm going to put in a dollar sign. The dollar sign says when I copy down the rows, just to stay in row 3, because there's nothing in cell B4. And there's nothing in cell B5. The asterisk key is for multiplication, and I want to multiply by the maturity value. And again, I'm going to put the dollar sign in there so it doesn't change times B1. So I get a $100 coupon payment in the first year, and I can just copy this down. I don't have to do this each for each and every one. If, you, if you've highlighted this cell, you notice how you have a three-dimensional plus sign. If you move to the corner, you see a little box in the right hand corner. If you move over there, it becomes kind of a two-dimensional plus sign. And you hold the left mouse button, you can drag this down. And I'm going to drag that down for for 10 years. And then in the final year, we're also going to get the maturity value. So I'm going to put in B1. And I don't need the dollar sign because I'm not copying anything. We're going to need the present value of each cash flow. Now, we could uh, we could um, divide by 1.10, 1.10 you know, squared, but it's probably easier just to use one of the Excel functions. And there's an Excel function that looks just like the financial calculator. It's PV, and you'll notice that underneath it tells you in what order to put the, the information. So the first thing it wants is the rate. The interest rate is in cell B2, and I'm going to put a dollar sign in because when I copy it down, I don't want anything to change. The number of periods is in cell A8. Okay, For the first period, it's going to be number one. For the second period, it's going to be number two. I want it to change, so I'm not going to put the dollar sign in. So the next cash flow, I want it to divide by 1.10 squared, etc. There's no payment. There's no um, annuity. The future value is the cash flow we get in year one or year two or year three, and that's in cell B8. I'm going to actually put a negative sign in here because when it returns the answer, 
if you recall from your financial calculator, it's going to give me a negative number, and I'd actually rather have a positive number. So I'm going to put in cell um, B8, and I'll just close the parenthesis, and hopefully that works. $90.91 is correct. And if you copied it down, okay, $82.64 would be $100 received two years from now what the present value of it is and so we'll copy it all the way down oops and copy it down one more time so these are the present value of all the cash flows and if you add them up you should get the price of the bond and so we can just go to this auto sum it's going to notice how it's highlighted all the correct cells just hit enter we get a thousand dollars for the bond so that looks good Okay, looks correct. In fact, you can sort of check by changing. If I lower the interest rate to 9%, the bond price should go up. It does. All right, I think we have this formula incorrectly. Now, we need the weights. We need the weights for each year. And how do we get that? We take the present value of the future cash flow for that period and divide it by the price of the bond. So I'm going to have... C8 divided by C, and I put the dollar sign in because when I copy it down, I want it to stay at C19. And so I get 0 0.9090, so about 9% of our cash flow is received in the first year, etc. Okay, copy that down, and if you like, you can change the number of decimal places. We don't need a whole bunch, that's enough. And what do we need now? We need T, the time period, times the weight. And the time period is in cell A8. And the weight is in cell D8. So we just multiply those together. Notice I didn't put the equal sign in, and so it didn't work. It thought it was a label. So where was I? A8 times D8. All right, that should work. And again, I'm going to copy this whole thing down. And if I add this up, I should get duration. So I'm going to use that summation thing again. And so I get a duration of 6.759. So this is what duration equals. All right, down here, I could actually, I'll tell you what, I'll put it over here. Let's have a change in the interest rate and let's have it change by 0 0.01. So we're going to have a 1% change in the interest rate. And we want to figure out what's the percentage change in the price of the bond. Well, our formula says it's minus the duration. The duration is in cell E. 19 times the change in the inter interest rate, which is in cell H8, H8, divided by 1 plus the yield, and the yield is in cell 1 plus, and the yield happens to be in cell B2. So, and I can change this to a percent, so it's a little easier to see. And make sure you have more decimal places. Okay, so you can expand the decimal places. So, if the interest rate changes by 1%, duration is telling us that the bonds price will change by about 6.14%. Okay, if the interest rate went up by 1%, then you would expect the bonds price to go down by about 6.14%. Now, let me just show you that by setting up the spreadsheet so I have numbers here, we can see how a change in yield will change the duration and change the percentage change in the bond's price. So what happens if the yield becomes higher? Let's make it really high, 20%. Notice the duration went down, and so did the percentage change in the bond's price. Why is that? Well, if you think about it intuitively, 
how are we valuing a bond? It's the present value of the future cash flows. Now, we, can look, we can look here. Notice that when we had the higher yield, let's go back to the original number so you can sort of recall what these numbers are. You had about a 9% weight for the first cash flow, 8% for the second, okay, 38% for the um, $1,000 plus another 3.8 for the coupon. So you're talking about over 40% of the monies received in year 10. At a higher interest rate, a really high rate, like 20%, notice that the early cash flows have higher weight, the later cash flows have much smaller weight because you're discounting by 1.10 to the 10th power. The bigger the number you use there, the bigger the number you'll divide by. So that lowers duration. Let me do one more. If I change the coupon rate, suppose I increase the coupon rate to 15%. What do you think is going to happen to the duration and the percentage change in the bond's price for a 1% increase in the interest rate? Well, let's think intuitively. A higher coupon is going to mean that you're getting more money in these early years. So that's probably going to make the weight higher, which means that that should, again, cause duration to get smaller. Let's see if that's what happens. Sure enough, that's what happens. Okay, This went from, what, around 9% to over 10%. Because you're getting your money back a little bit faster. You know, if we picked a 25% coupon, something ridiculous, you can see that, again, the weight is much, it's weighted much more towards the earlier cash flows. If we made a smaller coupon rate, let's say 6%, you can see that year one, which was weighted 9% when we had a 10% coupon, it's now only weighted 7%, so that increases duration. So the spreadsheet is a good way to do the calculations and to understand how changes in things like the coupon and the yield affect duration and the percentage change in the bond's price. The spreadsheet is also very good for all kinds of things you do in finance, all kinds of different scenarios or situations where you'll say, we're not sure what price we can charge. So let's let's do a spreadsheet. Let's work out what our cash flows will be with different prices. And you can do that quite easily if you set it up. So if you haven't learned to use a spreadsheet, it's a very useful tool. I have some tutorials on how to use the spreadsheet, which um, will probably be helpful.